Hey, what's going on there, uh, out of the heads? We're on the old DX66. Radio Shack. Realistic. Uh, shortwave monitor, whatever, slash, whatever. This is take three. I got I goofed up three times filming, so hopefully I got this one right. We're on band number, uh, shortwave number one, so we're starting off down here. Let's see what's going on. And by the way, shortwave ain't dying, by the way. You just gotta turn this guy right here. Al pasillo 5 en Venezuela con la Liga de Béisbol Profesional de Puerto Rico. En lo que eh, los cubanos están infectados en Japón, sí, de esta manera, y infectarse también. Sí, llegar al menos en la parte final. Está, están aquí, en este momento el cubo. Sí, pero lo que está escrito y lo que hasta este momento no sucede es que en noviembre comienza eh, la Liga. Sí. Now it's over to the editorial desk. Commentary viewpoint with Susan. Susan Lewis. Neither the recent tragedies that have cost dozens of lives, nor the harsh measures against migrants in the United States, for the very high cost of this adventure of the sport, the tens of thousands of people still for the dream of a better life in the middle of power. A few hours ago, the International Red Cross released an article that indicates that the regular migratory flow, that is, the masses of people without the despair that they are The article is violating the convention, the explain this phenomenon, among them, the increasing poverty, violence, and security. To this should be added the absence of the state and government, for multiple reasons, clearly providing dispensable services of care, education, housing, employment, and opportunities, particularly for the youngest sectors. In addition to being an emitter of migrants, the Easterners House of Representatives landing in Taiwan despite 
China's rules. Let's see the laws and ignore China's rules and even the advice of her own government. The Speaker of the U.S. House of Representatives kept to her initial plan and landed in Taiwan this Tuesday at around 10.40 p.m. local time. Though not officially confirmed, the visit is part of her Asia-Pacific tour that began on Monday and it is sure to infuriate the game and aggravate it and aggravate the already deteriorated relations between the two major world powers. Our delegation visit to Taiwan honors America's unwavering commitment to supporting Taiwan's vibrant democracy, said Nancy Pelosi in charge of the trade. The speaker began a controversial trip throughout the Asia-Pacific region on July 31st, although her official itinerary did not include the island. U.S. new outlets had widely assumed that Pelosi would make a stop in Taiwan after unnamed White House sources confirmed those plans despite serious Chinese warnings. In a lengthy July 28 video call, President Xi Jinping warned President Biden that a visit to Taiwan by Pelosi would be playing with fire. Tensions between the two nations continue to escalate at the mere suggestion oh, that Pelosi might set foot on that China territory. On both sides of the Taiwan Strait, development increased throughout the day in anticipation of Pelosi's arrival. The Chinese foreign minister has issued a lengthy statement condemning the visit, which sends the wrong message about Taiwan's independence to separatist forces. In the statement, the ministry reiterated that there's only one China in the world, and Taiwan is an inalienable part of it and that the only legitimate government is that of the People's Republic of China. The statement emphasized that Taiwanese and U.S. authorities are to blame for rising tensions and challenges across the strait, as they are constantly changing the status quo. The state of Taiwan News Agency has announced that the day will conduct more than starting fire exercises in the vicinity of the island in the vicinity of the island from August 4 to 7, China has considered a high-level meeting between U.S. and Taiwanese officials the first in 25 years since Republican Newt Gingrich visits during the Clinton administration a serious provocation. Beijing strongly opposes any show of U.S. support for Taiwanese independence and has vowed to take decisive actions against it. Right, President Xi Jinping warned his counterpart. Okay, Cuba. It's all you need to do. Ready for Manicuba? Mm -hmm. P.O. Box 6240, Havana, Cuba. 
P.O. Box 6240. Now, the fastest way is, as I said, email to the Correo Electronico address, and that is Radio HC at ENET, E-N-E-T dot C-U. That's Radio HC at E-N-E-T, ENET dot C-U. And that gets to us just like that. And it's real good. A lot of our listeners are doing that now. Most of these things that I have here from the mailbag are um, emails. Mm-hmm. We just print them up so I can read them on the radio. Right? So do that. Either way, there's, there's all kinds of different ways you can also communicate with us on our Facebook page. You can do it that way. Uh, on the um, page that we have on the podcast, our web page, yes. Our web page, you can do it there too. There's a place for correspondence. You click on correspondence there and you can use your internet connection to the devices. So there are different ways to get you two tools. Just the main thing is touch with us. Touch us. Reach out. And touch. I'm sorry for this first phone before I get all carried away here. Somebody probably should carry me away. Here is something from a listener in Japan. He is Masashiro Kobayashi. I think I've been working on my Japanese. That's as close as I can get. Masashiro Kobayashi. He says, I am pleased to report reception of your station on 11,880 kilohertz on 25-meter band. If the following details, and here are the details, are found correct, correct, I would appreciate very much to receive your reception card or letter. I hope this report will be useful to your station. Please refer to the audio clips. Oh, he's got some audio clips attached. To our English language broadcast. The simple is 35333. Using the uh, shortwave radio receiver that he has there in Japan. Well, thanks so much. Uh, and thanks for the audio clips, too. Now we can listen to it as if we're there with you in Japan, how it sounds to us um, there, how it sounds to you, how we sound to you in Japan. And it's nice. Thanks for writing to us. He listens to us, as he said, on 11,880 kilohertz, which is actually our frequency to Africa. That's right. So it goes like over to Africa and then keeps on going and hits uh, Asia and lower parts of Asia and Japan. Yeah. And puts us up on an Africa frequency. Strong frequency. 11,000 feet. It's on the 25 meter band. Short way. We will send you a QSL code. Okay. Uh, thanks a lot, uh, Masha Oshiro. Masha Oshiro in Japan, writing to us here at Radio Hub in Cuba. Uh, and the elimination of pain through the repair of injuries. Synergy One is guaranteed to improve the health of your body for your money back. Call 888-988-3325. That's 888-988-3325. Or visit SynergisticUniverse.com. Do the experts in profit say the big food shortage is coming in a few months. Most long-term food storage companies charge nine to ten thousand dollars for one person for one year. Just the kitchen does it not for half that price or a third that price, but. Go to Joseph Kitchen and get long-term emergency food for about $1,000 per person per year. We'll show you how to take the wheat, like in the days of Joseph the Pharaoh, grind it in 30 seconds, put it into a bread machine, push it back in two hours, 20 minutes later, you have a nice, hot, nutritious loaf of whole wheat bread. And it'll tell you food costs and... That sounds like I'm going to gag. There is not one food a human can live on.